All right, doctor. So let's um, let's start with this question that I have from a viewer. Is colon cancer the same thing as rectal cancer? That's a great question. Yeah, it's a really good question. Actually, it's one long tube if you think about it. So the colon and the rectum are one long tube about five feet long with the rectum being the last portion of the tube. So in essence, we call it colorectal cancer, but it's really just an anatomy. The colon is otherwise known as the large intestine and the rectum is the part of the colon at the very end near the anus that stores the stool right before you're ready to go to the bathroom. So it's more of a reservoir. Although the cancers are pretty similar, they're treated really differently. Colon cancer is treated usually with surgery and then sometimes chemo, whereas rectal cancer, depending on the stage, is treated with chemo and surgery and most of the time radiation also. So although we lump it together, we separate it by anatomy. And doctor, are there symptoms that people should look out for when it comes to uh, colon cancer? Well, yes and no. It, obviously, if somebody has any new abdominal pain, any bleeding with their bowel movements or any change in their bowel movements where the caliber of changes or their consistency changes, then those are red flags. Those are symptoms that the patient should go see their doctor to get it evaluated. But unfortunately, most of the time colorectal cancer comes without any symptoms at all. That's why we rely on screening, such like the colonoscopy to be sure that we can catch cancers before they develop into something more aggressive or something that's starting to spread. Caught early with colonoscopy, we can identify these cancers before they have a chance to spread. Unfortunately, not everybody has symptoms, underscoring the importance of screening. And doctor, since you mentioned the word spread, do we know how quickly uh, colon cancer can spread and are there different types of colon cancer? Most of the colon cancers are what we call adenocarcinomas, which is a relatively medium growing cancer. When it does go to spread, it's over a couple of years after the initial onset of the tumor, and the tumor can often spread to the liver or to the lungs. We call that stage four disease. Our goal obviously is to catch it way before this point when the cancer is in its smallest form. The colon cancer likes to spread via the lymph nodes. So what happens is the, the tumor will go from the colon to the lymph nodes, and then once it goes to the lymph nodes, it can really go wherever it wants to in the, in the body. So one of the goals of surgery is to take out the tumor and take out those lymph nodes before it has a chance to spread to some of the other organs. And doctor, I have a viewer question here that just came in. Um, this person is asking, and there's no name, but it's a great question. We've heard about HPV and its relation to cervical and oral cancers, but does it play a role in colon or anal cancer? Doctor? That's a great question. Actually, it does. It has to do with anal cancer primarily. So HPV is one of the viruses that we know that cause cancer. It causes head and neck cancer, it causes cervical cancer, it causes anal cancer and penile can cancer. That cancer is very different from the one we're talking about today. HPV associated anal cancer is essentially a skin cancer that's treated very differently than the colorectal cancer that we're seeing today, that we're talking about today. Colorectal cancer, on the other hand, is a called an adenocarcinoma that has nothing to do with HPV. And doctor, can colon cancer reoccur? It can. So some people have a genetic predisposition to developing colorectal cancer, in which case, once we find their first cancer at a young age, we watch them very, very carefully because we don't want them to get a second or third cancer. Sometimes we have to be even more aggressive with their surgery, knowing that patients are prone to recurrence. Oftentimes though, however, with patients just with one cancer, they can recur later on, either in the same area or in a different area, like the lungs or the liver, in which case we watch patients for about five years after their initial presentation, just to be sure that that cancer doesn't come back. And I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you about heredity, genetics. Obviously, that plays a role, but that's not just it. Are there other risk factors as well, doctor? There are. So first off on the genetics, about 10 to 15 percent of all colorectal cancers are due to genetics. And those are family histories that have a predisposition to certain types of cancers. We know that some patients with like, let's say, for instance, Lynch syndrome, which is one of the genetic factors that we see quite often, are prone to a constellation of cancers. Knowing that that family has that genetic defect in their lineage allows us to not only screen for their colon cancer risk, but also their other cancer risks that they may be susceptible to. 
So our job with cl to clinicians is treat their colon cancer plus screen them for their other cancers as well. Now for the majority of Americans, they don't have this genetic defect. They are just prone to colon cancer for a number of different reasons. We're still trying to figure out the exact reasons that make one more susceptible to colon cancer, but we know a couple of things to be true. Patients who have low exercise tolerance, meaning they don't do any exercise at all or live sedentary lives. Patients who have a poor diet, high fat, low protein, low fiber diets, and smoking all lead to higher risk for colorectal cancer. We also know that obesity makes someone more prone to colorectal cancer. And doctor, you mentioned diet. I'm gonna add one more. Uh, what about alcohol use in terms of maybe someone enjoying a cocktail every day, uh, a couple, is that a factor as well? There aren't as many data on chronic alcohol use um, and limited data on occasional or rare alcohol use. So whereas we want to say we want people to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle, we can't necessarily pin it down on one thing or another. We do know, however, that even when you look at different generations, some cancer risks are differ as different ages. So for instance, if we take the baby boomer population, when they were in their 30s, they had lower rates of colorectal cancer than do the current generations like the millennials and generation X generation. So it can be a societal thing as well. Many people think that the newer, the younger generation of people have again, more sedentary lifestyles with higher fat foods than our parents did. And that owes to our higher rates of colorectal cancer in younger people. And aspirin, uh, I've heard that in the past about it um, helping prevent colon cancer, you say? That's a great question. So actually the data are all over the place on this one as well. So when we look at some longitudinal large population based studies and we look at people who take high dose aspirin every day, we can see some improvement in their colorectal cancer risk. Some people say that as much as 20% reduced risk of colorectal cancer for patients that take a high dose aspirin every day. Now obviously a high dose aspirin every day has its own health implications, especially if people have bleeding risks, other heart disease, are on other medications that thin their blood, or even have ulcers. So those patients probably would want to talk to their doctor before unilaterally starting an aspirin every day. On patients or in patients that have high risk disease, such as those with the genetic conditions that we just discussed, there are more convincing data showing that these patients probably do benefit from an aspirin. So I do have this conversation with patients often where the aspirin may actually reduce their risk for colorectal cancer. Now it's not gonna override any bad effects of someone not exercising and eating you know, high fat fast food every day. The aspirin is not gonna cure that, but the aspirin may be one more tool in our armamentarium to decrease one's cancer risk.